How's it going guys, Sean here. And I wanna do a quick vid on powdered steel versus uh, ingot steel, cast ingot steel. And so here on my right, we have the fancy powdered steels. This is a L Max right here, Bark River Gunny. This is a HAP 40, uh, Japanese version basically of uh, M4 Rex. Over here we have a uh, A2 Bark River, uh, Bravo 1, and just your standard VG10 Delica right here. So what is the big difference between the powdered steel and the normal steel over here, the ingot steel? Well the difference is you are able to pack way more alloys than possible in uh, the powdered steels. You, This steel right here has close to 2% carbon. This has almost one and a half. And they're chocked full of all these carbide formers such as vanadium. That's probably one of the biggest because it's the uh, hardest, smallest carbide former. I believe no niobium has maybe a little bit more hardness than it's finer, but it's not quite used too much in cutlery. And yeah, they're just able to just pack these knives with just tons of alloying and stuff that is just not possible in these just normal uh, ingot steels. Because what would happen if you didn't powder the steel is that you would just get a ton of clumping. You would just get huge clumps. And so if we were to zoom in on each, if we had the same amount of alloy on LMAX, but one of them was powdered and one of them wasn't, you would just see these just huge clumps. And they wouldn't be very even. It'd almost be like uh, uh, inclusions. Occlusions, I can't remember if I'm using that correctly. Versus when you have the powdered steel process, all the different packets of carbides and, and alloys are able to have an incredibly uniform Okay, fine grain structure that is just not possible with the amount of alloy that's packed into the steel. Well, how do they do that? Well, basically what happens is they basically spray the steel out into it. I mean, this is an industrial, industrial scale, okay? And it's basically sprayed out into this uh, massive container. Each one of these little droplets of melted steel are basically their own ingot, okay, with an even amount of all the alloy that's packed inside here. Versus if we were just to pour the melted steel into an ingot, okay, you would just have, it would just start to kind of uh, clump together, uh, like so. This is, this is freaking brutal. Thanks for bearing with me, guys. It would basically just start to clump together in these huge clumps. And sure, with heat treatment, yeah, you can move around the furniture, so to speak, into the steel, okay? You can help kind of disperse the stuff. There's only so much you can do, though. And with some of these, uh, huge clumps right here. There's just just not much you can do even with heat treatment. So that's where the PM process really shines is that these hard packets of alloying are just simply not allowed to clump up. So what if we took a steel like A2 or VG10 and we made powdered metallurgy out of these right here? Well the problem is this is an expensive process and the benefits wouldn't be readily noticed. You wouldn't notice it, so to speak, because a good heat treatment can move around the furniture on these steels with, with no problem. You know, with a good heat treat, you, you don't need a PM process on these guys because there's not a ton of stuff just packed into the steel. Versus these guys over here, they really need it to prevent all that clumping so that you can get this fine grain structure from heat treating. So there you have it in a nutshell, powdered steel versus normal steel. That's basically how it works, as simply as I could put it. 
All right. Thank you guys. Take care.